okay. And then by 2017, you were on the Double XL freshman cover. Mm -hmm. How's that? Just me and with Vanessa. Like on some player shit. Because the year I hit her, I'm like, I'm supposed to be on this. And then I went up there, talked to her. She picked my brain. I feel like she'd be testing because if you're a sucker, you're going to fold. I was a real one. I kept fucking with her. We built a relationship over a year. And that's kind of how I earned it. Just me being, you know, a real good person, you know. Who else was on that cover? Hold on. I'm pulling Cardi, it up. Cardi, A Boogie. X. XXX Tentacion was on that Kyle. Cover. A lot of fucking people. Tokyo. A lot of I fuck down there, everybody on there. Ugly God. Yeah. That's the only one I really don't don't know like that and still don't know like that. I have interviewed him a couple of times. Yeah, that's the only one I don't really know like that. You had the brick phone on the cover. Hell yeah. <laughs> so the old school brick player. phone. <laughs> from, from 1989. Some player shit. Man, XXX Tentacion was on that cover though. Yeah, Man. I was on I'm like, man, I got the only, I know what you did last summer, Clever. Like, I'm the only one that had this body before Nip passed. It was like, we had the first death. I'm like, damn. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. So, so you're getting a ton of attention at this point. Yeah. Uh, then that same year you dropped Before I Wake. That was just me sticking it to the man. I was mad at Interscope. I don't really care for that project. It was just me like, y'all not let me do me. I'm going to just do this. You know? That's what that was. That had you uh, crowd surfing on the cover. It was like me falling out the sky and all this shit on the bottom was yeah. was I'm facing at the moment. That that's why that? you see like a gun pointing at me, just like all that crazy the, money. The Rolex. Fame, everything that's coming towards me. But then it's like I'm I'm in limbo, basically. Mm -hmm. So you don't like that project? No, I tell you all the time. I'm trying to get that shit down. <laughs> it's not mixed, mastered, nothing. It's really? just awesome. Because I was so mad because it's like I kept trying to put out music and oh you can't put this out. No, you can't put this out. So it was just like, oh, I'm just throw this out. Oh well. That's how that was. Why didn't Interscope want you to put out music? I don't feel like it was a machine. I feel like it was just the artist I was signed to had his own vision of what he wanted me to do. And it wasn't in alignment with what he wanted to do. But when I came to you, I was this way. Why well, stop that? You know, it stopped the progression. So instead of you adding fire to it, you put water on it. Okay, this is YG you're talking about. Yeah. So the two of you stopped getting along or stopped being on the same page? It was never like or? no beef. It was just more so like, let me do me, you know? And and, and eventually that's why I ended up just, you know, severing ties because it's just like, I'm not going to flourish here. If I stay here, I ain't going to never be what I'm supposed to do. I mean, never be what I'm supposed to be and reach my maximum okay. altitude, you know what I'm saying? And I was just like, this ain't a fit for me. It ain't what I envisioned myself being. And I don't want to wait time. 30, 40 years old and be like, damn, I should have been, you know, did that trying to be loyal. Because I was loyal. I stayed down. You feel me? Like, all right, eventually we're going to get it together. But then it's like, what I'm going to do? Keep putting your vision first and not mine? This ain't my vision for my career. So I had to do what I had to do. It was best for me. Right. Because eventually you ended up on uh, YG's next album on the song uh, Do Not Disturb, mm -hmm. which I assume was recorded before you guys part ways. Yeah, it was something I was doing. I was starting to work on another project and he... He came in and was like, uh. <laughs> well, because you do the first half of the song. It, the whole song was me. Right. Yeah, and then just like. like yeah, I was listening to it this morning. I'm like, all right, so when's when's Jeezy going to come on? Yeah. Why Jeezy going to come on? Yeah. I'm listening and I'm listening. And there's a hook. Yeah. There's a whole chorus. There's another hook. Everything by you. And then everyone else comes mm -hmm. on at the end. That's typically how I go. He'll come in. He'll be like, all right. Mm -mm. So he just wanted that song once again. Like, yeah. well, why you hate me? Yeah. Okay. Good song, though. It. I just don't listen to it no more. I don't listen to nothing that y'all did on Interscope. It's traumatizing. Okay. Are you and YG still on good terms or? No, we don't speak. You don't speak. Ain't no beef. We just don't speak. How did he feel about you leaving? That's why we don't speak. He didn't like it. No, there was some things said that I felt like until he rectified and apologized, I don't feel like it's supporting me having a conversation because then I'm pacifying your actions. And me being a woman and a queen that stand on my word, I felt like you got to be a man and stand on yours and apologize for some of the things that were said and done. Right. Because something to ride to. Kept getting delayed. Like a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Can you say what, what he said to you? It wasn't, it wasn't nothing that I don't want to repeat. You know what I'm saying? Because at okay. the end of the day, to me, I, I'm a real bitch. You feel me? I'm a real ass person in general. So it's like, if I consider you family, you always family. And as a brother, me considering you a brother, mm -hmm. and you allegedly supposed to consider me a sister, it's some shit you need to rectify that you shouldn't have said it done. After you left Interscope 400, were you locked up for three years, not being able to put out music? Yeah, facts. I only put out like four, three, four songs on Interscope. 
okay, so they just said, if you're not. It was just like, I'm not pushing that. I'm not doing that. It ain't this. It ain't that. I'm not clearing this. It, it was a bunch of shit that I just felt like when I got here, this is who I was. When I got here, that's what got me hot. Why I stopped was working because you don't want me to do it. Then literally three, four months after I left, here comes the, 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 the prayer project that I just dropped. So it was just like, was it really me? Didn't well, take me that long to do that. I recorded that shit two, three weeks. It was done. Yeah. That's how quick. A Good Night and Ghetto was recorded in a week and a half. Mm. That project was recorded in two weeks. It's not hard for me to create the project. It's the part that was hard was the business. Right, because right around that time, I think it was like February 2018, that's when the Sprite commercial with LeBron mm -hmm. came out. And that's why I'm like, all right, I'm hotter than I ever been. I got double XL. Yeah. I got a commercial with LeBron. Let me put out the fucking music. This is the best promo you're gonna fucking get. But people don't understand that. Like, you know, and I can't force somebody to understand business, you know. If you got like how I look at it is that if you are an artist, you're gonna be more focused on your own career. So it's like you ain't gonna see what this other person needs to do because you're so focused on. I got to do this. I got to do this instead of me being like, all right, let me stand by this and make sure this go too. If you're going to put on your CEO hat. I feel like he wasn't ready to be a CEO. Well, listen, I, I don't I don't know YG's personal business, but as someone who's been professionally doing hip hop for 20 years, it's very rare for an artist to be able to put out other artists while they're not, while they're putting out music themselves. Correct. Like you just see it over and over again because- to wear a CEO hat, you kind of have to just be a CEO full time. Exactly. People always ask me like, oh, Vlad, why don't you start a record label? Because I'm doing Vlad TV full time. Like I, <laughs> it'd be a half-assed label with a bunch of pissed off artists. Exactly. If I did it myself, mm -hmm. that's why I, I never I never touch it. And I um, understood that. That's why I was like, hey, yo, yeah. if what's the best thing for us is to cut this business relationship. I f with you, but I don't f with this. Yeah. He couldn't rationalize that in the moment. You know, emotions is involved and you're going to just leave. And it's just like, it's not about you. Take your feelings out of it and think about me. Luckily, I own the good night in the ghetto, you know? But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'm not putting out no music. I can't do nothing. I can't feed my family like this. And if you really was a brother, you would have understood that. Like, Because yeah. if you was on Def Jam and Def Jam was telling you, you can't put out Big Bank, you would be very upset, right? Because you can't feed your family. You got daughters to feed your mama, all that. Now they, start, they haunting your career. That's how I felt like. This is haunting my career. I can't feed my family. Well, you guys have classics together. Absolutely. So you never no know. You never know what the death. future holds. There's no bad blood. Yeah. Other than the apology, we'll be cool. I just feel like as a woman, yeah. I deserve an apology for some of the things that was said to me. Well, he's gonna watch this. I can guarantee you. Absolutely. That. I'm pretty sure you're gonna <laughs> blast it. Come on, says YG. No. <laughs> Everyone watches live TV, whether yeah. they whether they admit it or not. Yeah, no facts. 